old-fashioned story. I want to read to you from the book of St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 15. Stand with me for the reading of the Word of the Lord. <clears throat> Pray the Lord to help me to convey to you what I feel here on my heart tonight. In the book of St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 15, just for the sake of reading and how precious this little story is, I won't read it all. you got time for the Word of God, ain't you? <clears throat> and the Bible said, in verse 11, And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, Give me the portion of the goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto him his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would have faint have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's house? have bread and enough to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father's house. I will go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto, the fa unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no, worth, no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, I want to say this right here before I read any further. This is a prime example of the church happy for the backslider that comes home. It wasn't just the daddy that ran out and greeted the boy. Servants followed the daddy. Hallelujah. And the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they begin to be merry. Now, his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf. Because he had received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee and neither transgress at any time thy commandment. And yet thou givest me no, give me a kid. Thou hast never given me a kid that I may Make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son was come, which have devoured thy living with harlots, and has killed for him the fatty calf, and he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meant that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and found. Right. The Lord will help me before we pray. 
I want to preach to you tonight on the tragedy of too long in the field. The tragedy of too long in the field. Would you stretch your hands this way and ask the Lord to help us follow? Hallelujah. I pray that you would move in this service and touch our hearts here tonight. Amen. You may be seated. Such a tragic hush has fell over this congregation tonight. And it worries me. And I don't know what it is, but maybe the Lord will help us find it. This story that I read to you is some of the oldest writ of God's Word. It has been used and it has been talked about in many backsliding conditions. When men and women have drifted away from God, when men has mounted the pulpit to reach for backslidden men and to call for men to come out of darkness into God's marvelous light, it is the calling of a wayward boy, a wayward girl, a wayward man, a wayward woman, It is the voice of opportunity and hope given to any man or any woman that there is a place you can come back to. I tell you, there's nothing in all the world no greater to me than the joy of being in the house of God. Amen. David said, how angable is thy house, O Lord. When you get to talking about the church, when you get talking about coming into the house of God and feeling the presence of the Lord and feeling the Holy Ghost and feeling the power of God as it rushes in and begins to touch our hearts and unite our lives and just seems to send a melody to our soul that there is a brighter day coming. Amen. I can understand why David said, how amiable is thy house, O God. In essence, what he was saying was, I love the dwelling place of the Lord. I love the house of God. Amen. It almost staggers my mind and it almost bothers me at how some men want to backslide and leave the house of God. I mean, it just... I just can't understand it. It gets the best of my thinking. I do not understand why a man would want to leave safety to live on the edge of chance and to take the opportunity to live a life where he doesn't know or she know. If they took their last breath, where would they spend eternity? Amen. But all the privilege of being in the house of God, there is nothing no more refreshing than it is to hear inside of this church that some backslider has prayed through, that some lost man or some lost woman has come back to the fold of God and was saved and born again. Everybody in this house, whether it's your child or whether it was somebody else's child or whether it was your husband or whether it is your wife, when you heard the Resounding news. A prodigal has come home. I'm telling you, it become a time of merry. It become a time of praise. It become a time of gathering. We killed the cat of cat. We crunk up the music and we begin to dance because that that was lost has been given back unto us again. Help us here, Lord. I mean, that is not my topic. But somehow or another, just a little bit right here and you turn the house down. I mean, there is somehow or another 
We have lost the hidden element. What made us happy? It wasn't our standard and I'm all for it. But it was the harvest of our souls. Of men being saved. Women being born again. That was the highlight of the church. I want to talk to you just a minute. When that Pentecostal church was born out of the book of Acts, she shouted with power. She had authority with God. But you know what else she had? She had salt in her background where she had fallen, been drawn to the fire and drawn to the power. I said, God, give us another touch where we can see men pray through and get saved again. I'll never forget. I'll never forget what it felt like in my own heart to feel what it was when the Lord saved me. Next month is going to mark 30 years for me that I've been born again and preaching. I got called to preach shortly. Stay with me just a minute. I got called to preach shortly after I got saved. I'll never forget what it felt like when I knelt down at the altar that night. And I didn't really know, even though reared in church all my life, and even having saved mamas and daddy, I did not even understand what it felt like to even really know how to approach such a holy God and such a righteous God. I'll never forget just falling over on that altar altar that night, on that Tuesday night on November the 8th, 30 years ago, at 9.30, I remember the time just as good as I can remember my name. I fell over on that altar. I pleaded for mercy. I asked like the prodigal. I'm unworthy to be your son, but if you could just let me get back in the house, if you could just let me know what it feels like, to know I ain't got to sleep in my soul from pillar to post and wonder if I'm going to heaven or if I'm going to hell. I want you to know from the night being saved is more than just saying I'm saved. It's a security against the winds of adversity. It is a security against the onslaught of hell. It's a promise from heaven given into the soul of man that if you stay saved I'm going to get you out of this. I'm going to bring you home where there is no more night, where it's always sunshine, where it's always daylight, where the joy is the light of heaven. Hey Amen. I'll never forget that night. That night made a night of history. That's one prejudice and will live in infamy forever. Hallelujah. Oh, I may forget a lot of things, but I'll never forget the night when my father ran and kissed me on my neck. Oh, amen. You know the reason some folks, here we go, they can't stay saved, they can't stay happy. They don't know what it's like to stay happy. I want to tell you something. When you get saved and you get honestly born again, you won't worry about keeping it a week or two and saying, well, I just lose it. Man, oh man, I'm telling you, when you get saved just right, you ain't looking at weeks or two. You're looking at eternity, mister. Well, come on here now. I'm telling you, you're looking in the eyes of eternity. And you know what you say? I'm counting it all lost that I may gain Christ. I'm going to tell you why. I know some of you young children so wet behind the ears. You get your little weights out and you run your little track and you prance around young girls like you own the world and the world owns it to you. And you put your little tight shirt on. I'm going to tell you something. It's a cartoon world that you're living in. The reality is it's heaven or 
of hell. You're saved and you're lost. Thank God Almighty. Ask the prodigal. He's been there, done it, and bought the ticket. And he's declared the threat at the Father's house. He's better than the world. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, you ain't looking. You ain't looking at a couple of days, a couple of weeks. I'll pray through and get a hold of this, and then I'll lose it. Oh, no, no, no. I feel like I'm going to address an issue that's needed to address it. When you really get saved, we'll see you saved. Come on here now. Stand up, Heather. I mean, hey, I, I, this is just one of the closest connotations to what I'm preaching. I mean, hey, we've been in the middle of that five-week revival. Matter of fact, in the second week of that five-week revival, I was standing right over there, and the Holy Ghost spoke to me while they were probably no doubt. I know. I know they were way out in sin, shacked up, living together, doing things they shouldn't do, running with a crowd they shouldn't run with. That's enough of that. But the Holy Ghost said, you can claim them in this meeting. Amen. You know what happened? I'll tell you what happened. The Father looked down the road and he said, I can see a boy. I can see a girl. I want you to know sin will wear you out. It'll take away your conscience. It'll rip up your mind. It'll mess up your world. And the only place to get it back is in the Father's house. Just for a brief minute. Run down there and stand by her. I mean, hey, when you get saved, hallelujah. I know some of you don't know where I'm headed, but I know where I'm going. Stay here with me. When you really get saved, you ain't looking at just the fact. I pray tonight. Hope it goes good tomorrow. No, it's going to go good. You know why it's going to go good? I got saved. Are you hearing me in this house? When I got saved, I wasn't worried about tomorrow. I wasn't worried about what I had to give up. I was worried about keeping what I had and grab a little hold of and see if I can add to it and get more of it. Thank God. Give me a chance. That's happy. I'm happy and saved. Ain't going to believe it, are you? When Heather... I was on my way home. We went off to preach. There was a little lapse there in that meeting. I was coming home. And I know what the Holy Ghost told me. And Brother Jeff, if I be God's servant and I tell the truth, you better take care of the promise. God gave you that night and don't kill it. Are you hearing me? I mean, if God's big enough to make a promise, you better be big enough to carry it and take care of it. Oh, yeah. When they were out in sin, all I could hear was, pray for Greg and Heather. Pray for my daughter that she'll get saved. Now they're in the house of God. You know what the devil would love to do? Bring war in the house. Come on, you ain't talking to me. He'd love to bring war in the house. My God, I wish I had what I needed to get it across. I'm telling you, I'm preaching with everything I got. We have been too long out in the field until the dust of the world has got in our eyes. It's packed up and stopped up our joy. 
It's messed up our thinking. We need a good old fashioned cleaning out. I'm getting the power back. Working in our lives. Making us happy. My brother came home. My sister came home. My father, he came back. I'm telling you, thank God. When the church goes to rejoicing over the lives, God's gonna send them in. I don't care what you think. When the Lord said, you can have them. You know what that told me? He had already been to the hog pen and found out they didn't like what they were doing. You know why you're miserable? It's because the Father has already looked in your hall pen and he's realized you ain't happy eating the husk and the swine are eating. Oh, you ain't happy. Oh, come on now. If I was in this building lost, the first thing I'd want to do is get saved. I'd trade my bucket in for a splendoring table of God's goodness. I'd trade the old slot bucket in for a dining room set at the house of God where I could eat bread, fresh out the oven of God's grace and the mercy of the Lord. I said, God, God, help us to be happy. Happy about it again. Let me hurry here. I've seen men live in torment. I've seen young people, listen to me, live in torment because they said, well, we can't keep it but a couple of weeks. Because you ain't going to pray through. They can all get mad at me. If they want to. But I know. I don't care what anybody says. I know. She prayed through. And. I know. Ease up. Let me get in here. And I know he prayed through. I'm going to preach with you, okay? Come on with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know how I know he prayed through? Come on here. I want you to know why. That devil didn't want him to like me. He didn't care for me. He didn't care to sin about me or this church. But come on here. But you know what happened when men pray through? They get the love of God in their heart. You understand what Paul said? He said, the things that I used to hate, I now love. And the things I used to love, I now hate. It's an opposite. When the blood of Jesus gets inside of the heart of a man, it changes him inside and out. I wouldn't say nothing to hurt or embarrass him, but he knows it. The devil didn't want him to like me. And it was even told to me, he said he didn't care for that preacher. But he shook my hand this morning and said, I love you. You quit your hating when you get saved. Come on now. You quit the bitterness in your life when you get saved. I'm talking about being saved. I don't know if I got a church here that believes in that old fashioned gospel saving, but I still believe in it. I still believe it'll take the blackest heart and make it as white as snow. I believe it'll take the vilest tongue and make it as sweet as honey. I still believe it'll take the reproach and turn it into a grace. It'll take the dishonor. And turn it in order. Why? Because God's grace is sufficient and able. Let 
Somebody praise Him. So he left us. I'm tired of hearing. I'm tired of hearing folks say, I can't keep it but just for a few days. And then I'm right back in that mind battle. You ain't never prayed through over it. That's why you're back in it. You know where this message was born? This thing ain't even 12 hours old yet. I was sitting in Sunday school. Before I said anything this morning, I felt the Holy Ghost walk by my pew, tapped on my heart, and I flipped open my Bible. He said the reason for lost joy, he said they've been too long in the field. Come on, here. You ever heard any of them old timers say, you can get too much of the good thing? I've heard them say it. And it wasn't that the good thing was wrong. It just distorts your thinking. I got some of you so scared you ain't going to say nothing. You know what happened to our preachers? I understand. I understand there's judgment in preaching. I understand, but you know why? It's always been a thunder in your voice. And it's always, there's never, I'm coming up and coming out. And there's never a lifting up. Because you know why? Because we can get so lost in the field of working and plowing until we forget the joy of what it's like to live in the Father's house. Oh, come on now! You know what the Father's house was under this man? It was a bed and a table and a place to sleep. It wasn't no more the joy and the riches of the Father. When I needed healing, it's in my daddy's house. When I need lifting up, it was in my daddy's house. When I needed encouragement, it was in my daddy's house. I'm telling you, you got to feel dirt in your eyes. You got a tragedy headed of you. You need to get back to the Father's house and get back into the table and understand those oh, taste and see that the Lord is God. Hear me. I don't want to preach long. But while this boy was happy, and while he was excited, he was willing to take a barn. He was willing to do without a ring. He was willing to do without sandals. He was even willing to just wash out in some creek these old dirty hog pin clothes. But the father looked at him He said, you belong in the house, not in the field. The father looked at him and said, you don't belong eating servant food. You belong to eat the father's food. Hallelujah. Oh, come on now, you ain't helping me. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost like preaching. And I'm feeling like I want to do a whole lot of pointing. Because i tell you why. I'm going to tell you why some of you are just can just literally about as God to where you can't stand it no more. Your standards become stagnated to you. You ain't happy about it no more. It's because, you see, we've lost that element of surprise to the enemy. And David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Hey, listen, I've been fighting in the field all week. And when Nathan announced we're having church Sunday, he said, you mean... I can put my sword in his sheath and lay down my bow and take off these old war garments and put on a diamond of praise. Thank God I'm glad to go to church. I'm glad to head to the house of God. Why is it? It's a consolation. The war of hell. The lies of the devil. They don't penetrate God's house. 
quickly to the piano. Get on the drums. Get on the bass. Run quickly. I mean, I'm feeling like preaching. You feeling what I feel, you'd run up here. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. Come on here now. I'm telling you, when I got to looking over there in that scripture where he said he came out of the field and he looked and he said, what's going on in there? Do you know that it is very possible for you to sit in this church and us dance and sing and you still have field dirt in your eyes? That's why they look at us and say, what's all the big do? What's all so happy about? Don't you understand? We're in the last days. Yeah, for the church is the most exciting time of her life. We're going home. Wow! God, God. I wish I had some saved people in here that would say amen to it. Hallelujah! I'm telling you why I'd be excited. I'm telling you the battle's about to be over. The glory's coming. The King of our life. The Lord and the lover of our soul. He's a witness lift to blow the trumpet and declare it's over! Give me some music. Come on, give me some music. I mean, I want some merry music. You got this thing on where it can pick up on that CD? That's what was going on. He walked in out of the field from plowing. He said, what's happening inside there? You know why some of you can't hear what we're saying? You've been so long in the field. It's made you bitter because you had to work. It's made you upset because you had to live holy. It made you upset because you can't live like Jezebel. I'm telling you, I'm happy on my journey. I want to live in a house. I want to worship in a house. I don't want to live always in my fear. Come on here. Softly. Softly. You know what happened? Come on now. Hurry and find your place to stand. I'm not done preaching. You know what happened? He got so upset because everybody was so happy. He got so distraught. Because everybody was so excited. You know, there's two things I want to mention right here. He lost his joy in the service of doing the right thing. You didn't hear me, did you? I said he lost his joy in the service of doing the right thing. Did you not hear what the Word of God said? He said, I've never broke your commandments. I've never took anything. There's some of you in this building. Smoking ain't your problem. Drinking ain't your problem. Lying ain't your problem. But you've lost your joy. Oh, you ain't happy anymore. You're not excited anymore. 
Why is it? I tell you what it is. I tell you when we get to talking about living right, all we can do is show our hands that they got blisters from the plow. But oh, I must tell you, it ain't always plowing days. There's days at the table. There's days that we linger in the line of God. There's days that we get drunk in the Holy God. Are you listening to me or what? The tragedy was when he come out of the field, number two, it was an evident fact that he lost his joy. And number two, he lost his concern about his brother in the business of work. Preachers, don't get so carried away plowing that you forget that there's a harvest, that our table ain't complete until we get our brothers back home. Somebody told me one time, and I understand what they were saying. Said them at backslide, they don't want to come to church, they don't want to live right. So don't let it worry you. Don't let it get you down. Don't let it bug you. Go on and get somebody else. I understand. I understand. But you want my eyes just as cloudy with dirt as yours is. You want my ears to be stopped up with the dust of plowing. That's what you're wanting out of me. You want me to get to where the heat of the day, it takes and parches my mouth until I just feel like the entire service of God ain't nothing but a strain and a burden and a requirement of something that I've got to do instead of realizing there is a bell to be rung and there is a dinner time at the Father's house. Can you say, man? I want you to know something. When this church gets her joy back intact, it's going to become a beacon light in a dark world. Don't mess with me. I'll turn this thing around by the grace of God. Maybe the reason your wife ain't saved, mister. She don't see enough joy out of you to want to be saved. Maybe the reason your child ain't saved, Mama, Daddy, because all they see out of you is nothing but the blisters of the plow. They don't ever see you come home with the dew of being all night in the Father's house. Wow! Oh! Hallelujah! Come on now! We're so worried, Brother James, what's going to happen to my boy until we're so worried about building fences and hedges, taking them hunting, taking them fishing, and doing everything except for giving them the one element that hell can't do nothing about, and that's the joy of the Lord. Look at me. You fearful mamas, listen to me. You know how to get fear out of your baby? Joy will conquer fear. Did you hear what I said? I said joy. It will conquer fear. Fear is a tactic of hell. But joy is an element of heaven. I'm going to put these notes up. Come here, Bethany. Get that microphone. Are they on window? You might have to stop and start over. I don't know what you're playing. I want you to kick off what she was singing a minute ago. I mean, I want you to put some life in it. Give me the course. Oh, what I have is a soul bought by the blood and sanctified. Oh, what I have is a living Come on now. Here 
for a little while a bumper. While they're singing, I got reading behind one commentary and he said, you know what it was like? He said, when he came out of the dryness of the field, he said it was like there was a symphony going on in the house. It took him by storm. Oh, come on now. I'm not a fool. I didn't wake up. Give me Kurt. Get on this altar. I wouldn't contain you. I wouldn't hold you. There's somebody dead. He's alive. He's come home. If we get the church back, I'll be unhappy again. And rejoice again. The joy of the Lord. Let me come on straight again. I don't know if they ran out to get a bucket of water. I don't know what they did. Somehow or another, there's a servant on the outside. When he said, what's going on? He told him, he said, hey, your brother's come home. I'm talking to you. You know you can be so right and be so wrong. Come on now. He said, Preacher, that's just crazy, idiotic. Yeah, the tragedy was he never took advantage of what was in the house. He saw the house as being no more than just a building. He didn't ever see that it was for the asking. If you want it, you can have it. All he saw out of daddy in the service was I've got to work, I've got to labor. Can I get a little personal here? You know what? Some of you, when you first got saved, you was happy about keeping the scissors out of your hair. You know what? You was happy about keeping the makeup off your face because you were so much at the table. You were so happy about it. You were so excited that I got saved. I got born again. And I'm not lost. And I'm on my way to heaven. But you know what we did? We jumped out there and went in the field. And all we've done was just got so lost in plowing. That's what the problem is. I'm telling you, we're woken, we're moping around in a promised land and it's flat full of treasures and we won't even get our shovel out and say, God, you said I can have it if I want it. I'm asking to give it to me. And you know what we'll do? We'll just go right back to the field. We'll go to plowing and we'll plow. Do you understand? Look at me in this house. This was a bitter man and he was bitter in the process until I'm almost right. He was bitter and didn't even know he was bitter. He was bitter and didn't even know it until he realized I ain't happy about my brother. I ain't happy. Oh, I gotta hurry. But you hear me in this house. I can just about see it. I'm seeing when that servant tells him, hey, your brother's home. Where's Greg? You know, there's some folks, since God saved you, called you to preach, you and your girl got married, and then all of a sudden the Holy Ghost came by. On that Tuesday night, I was standing in this building. On Wednesday night, I'm sorry. I was standing right over there. 
Heather didn't even know she was expecting. And the Holy Ghost said she's going to have a little baby. She was standing right there. Nobody said nothing to me. I felt the Holy Ghost when he came on me. He said she's going to have a baby. She didn't, where you at, Heather? Didn't even know. And she was expecting. And the Holy Ghost said it's going to be a little boy. You know what some crazy folks have done? So I'm going to go out and sin like Heather. Sin like Greg. Look, they came back and looked at their house. I mean, look what God's done for them. But you listen to me. I want you to answer one question for me. If we could have a personal interview, you know what he'll tell you? Don't leave the house. Stay in the house. It's the good news to tell you. You don't have to be bitter in the field to know what it feels like to come home. You don't have to go out and live in a hall pen to know how good you got it in the house. Just wipe the dirt out of your eyes and go back to living. I said, wipe the dirt out of your eyes and go back to living again. I mean, you won't even try to say amen. You won't even try to lift your hand. You'd rather they call shut up by the higher. You'd rather listen to the devil and just just go back to plow and you ain't got nothing anyways. I tell you, I'm happy. I may not always feel it, but I'm happy to be in God's house. So you know what he did? The Bible said he got angry and he wouldn't go in. Is that where you're at? Staring at this little fat face of mine. You see, point number one was the prodigal, the joy of him coming home. Point number two is getting you older folks. It's always been in the house. Get back to looking and see what you're missing. That didn't fly, did it? I said, that didn't fly, did it? We're just so stagnated until we're not happy about what we're doing. I told my wife the other day, I mean, I'm I'm serious. I was thinking a bunch of rotten junk that goes on in our world. They laugh at our holiness dressed women. Hey, some of you in here, you'll wear long skirts in here. Get your little self outside away from the house of God. You'll put your little short skirt on so you can match the rest of the world. You don't want them to know you're different. You're just a hypocrite. That's all wrong with you. Come on now. Some of you brethren, you'll come in here. You'll dress the epitome to fit into the crowd. But when you get a half a chance to get along, you'll say, these are my convictions. You ain't nothing but a hypocrite anyhow. That's all. Tell everybody I said it. Tell them all I said it. I mean, outside of work clothes, and even if they're work clothes, you'll see me, I'm dressed just like I am right now. I ain't got nothing to hide. Hallelujah. Come on here, smile big now. Oh, you ain't understanding what I'm preaching, are you? And it don't matter whether you like it or not. You're too out there in the field to understand anyways. But I tell you, I'm going to work in God's field. But while I'm working, I'm going to keep one foot headed in the direction of the house of God. Because I know that when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Where is that rock? It's in the house. The rock of ages. Church, God's house, that's where the help's at. Hey, listen to me. Mark chapter 6 and verse 31. The first clause of that verse. Jesus approaches his disciples and he says to them, Come. 
ye apart into a desert place. And he said, and rest a while. Well, it sounds like a strange contrast there, don't it? Desert, there's no water, it's dry. It's dry, the wind is hot, the sun's beating down, the sand is hot, there's no water. Only God knows how to take a desert and turn it into an oasis. He didn't go to that crowd and say, hey, let's go down to the clarion and get a good air conditioning room and sit down and take it easy. He said, I'm going to take you to the driest place there is. That's the desert. And I'm going to let you live and drink and be refreshed in your dry pot. In the place where you didn't think you was going to live. Man, that just don't seem right. Come apart. Go to the desert to rest. Yeah. Because you know when I get there, I'm going to give you water. The Bible said, Job said there is a path at the vulture's eye. Where is that path? It may be a desert place, but as long as God's there, in the fire out of the fire, in the lion's den, out of the lion's den, it's only God that can take the wash and turn it to the bear. Stop the music. Is that what you want? Is that where you want to live? Huh? Is that where you want to live? Come on now. I'm losing you and it shouldn't be. Is that where you want to live? You want to live in a house where there is no joy? Where there is no music? Where there is no happiness? Where there ain't nobody singing the songs of Zion. Is that what you want to do? Just plow all day long. Come in with the dust of the world all over you. Come to church and flop down on a pew somewhere. Hear a dry sermon. Hear a dry song. Say a dry prayer. Get in a dry car and go home. Live in a dry house. Live in a work world. Just dry and empty. And then you want to come to Judgment Day and say, Lord, look at my hands. I've got blisters where I've worked for you. But oh, oh, taste and see that the Lord... I want to go to church. I want to go to church where I can hear some things like, get ready to sing this one. Roll it all away. So when I'm down, when I'm down and out, when my heart is filled with fear and doubt, oh, y'all act like when I lift up my head and he lifts up my heart and my heart. Troubles just all rolled away. That's what I want to hear. Roll them all away, Lord. Troubles roll away, Lord. Roll them all away, Lord. Troubles roll away. Now when I lift up my head and he lifts up my heart and my troubles just all rolled away. Come on, pick it up. Roll away, Lord. Troubles roll away, Lord. Roll all away, Lord. Troubles roll away. That's what I want to hear. When I lift up my head and he that's what I want to go to church. I want to hear that there's somebody big enough to roll it away. How do I see so? I love how I am. I rolled it in. I want it to roll at the last minute. I want to eat at the table. Lord, he's a hand of my God. Come on, praise him. Sing it. Now when I lift up my head and he lifts up my heart and my troubles just all roll away, roll it all away, Lord. Troubles roll away, Lord. Roll it all away, Lord. Troubles roll away. Now when I lift up my head and he lifts up my heart and my 
Oh, I'm all just sorry. 